This video is sponsored by Longevity Technology. So hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where in this video we're going to talk all about telomeres and the role that telomeres play in the aging process. So we'll begin by looking at what telomeres are, so that will be in terms of the molecular underpinnings of telomeres, and then we'll look at the implications of telomere shortening at the cellular level and what happens to cells when they have short telomeres. And then we'll extend this further by looking at the organismal level and some of the mouse models that have been used to investigate this. And then we'll look at the current evidence that shows links between telomere shortening and the aging process. And then lastly, we'll address the question of whether increasing telomere length could be beneficial and look at some of the strategies in which this could be achieved. So let's begin with the fundamentals. What actually are telomeres? Well, the name derives from Greek with telos meaning end and meros meaning part, talking about the end part. The end part of what? Well, telomeres refer to the end parts of DNA. And so DNA contains all the genetic information that makes us us. And that genetic information is stored within the nucleus of a cell. And so DNA contains the four different nucleotides, adenine, guanine, thymine, and cytosine. And our DNA contains more than 3 billion base pairs. And the way that this is organised within a cell is in separate linear chromosomes. So the important word to take from that for this video is the word linear. The DNA has a linear structure, which means it has ends. And so you might think, well, big deal, who cares? Well, there are actually several reasons. Firstly, due to the way in which DNA is replicated every time a cell divides, it has a so-called end replication problem. And this is due to the nature of the polymerases and RNA templates that are used to synthesize DNA. And basically what happens is that one of the strands of DNA isn't fully replicated. And so it's an end replication problem because each time the DNA is replicated, a fragment of it gets lost. And so this results in progressive chromosomal shortening. And so this would be particularly bad if these ends of chromosomes contain genes that are important for the cell to survive. But instead, what's at the ends of DNA are these tandem repeats of six nucleotide sequences. In humans, the sequence is TTAGGG. And so telomeres just refer to these repetitive sequences found at the end of DNA. And these sequences are actually wrapped up in a protein complex called shelterin. And this sheltering complex is actually really important because it hides the ends of DNA out of sight from the DNA damage response machinery within a cell that would otherwise recognise the ends of a DNA as a double-stranded break and try and fuse two ends back together, which could end up in some interesting fragments of chromosomes, which isn't good. And so for these reasons, telomeres are often described as being like the shoe caps at the end of your shoelaces. Like how shoe caps protect the, the laces from unthreading, the telomeres help to maintain chromosomal stability. So each time a cell divides, these telomeres are going to get shorter because of the end replication problem. Interestingly though, work conducted by Elizabeth Blackburn, Carol Greider and Jack Shostak discovered the enzyme telomerase that can actually extend telomeres and prevent them from shortening over time, and this work led to them being awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 2009. And so the interesting thing about telomerase is that it's a ribonucleoprotein complex. And what that means is that there's a protein component of telomerase, and there's also a RNA component, which explains the ribonucleo parts. And so the protein component that has the enzymatic activity to synthesize these telomeric repeats is known as telomerase reverse transcriptase, or TERT. And then the other important aspect is this RNA component, which is what uh, mediates the recognition of the complex to the telomeres. And that's the RNA component known as telomerase RNA component, TERC. So we have TERT and TERC, and this makes up telomerase. Now, the reason I went into so much detail was because we'll come back to this later on when we look at strategies of extending telomeres. And that's because in majority of cells, telomerase isn't expressed. And so actually the telomeres shorten over time. So this brings us on to looking at the cellular level implications of telomere shortening and how it relates to the aging process. The best way to explain this is with the graph I am drawing out now. The x-axis represents the number of divisions a cell has undergone, whilst the y-axis shows the length of the telomeres. As we've discussed, 
the length of telomeres and the absence or minimal telomerase activity will decrease over time. Since telomeres are important for maintaining chromosome stability and cell function, when their length reaches a telomere length limit, the cell stops dividing and enters so-called replicative senescence. This is a cell state whereby the cell is still active, but it's just not dividing. And this limit you may have already heard of before is called the Hayflick limit, after Leonard Hayflick who noticed that normal human cells stop dividing after replicating around 50 times. Cells that break through this limit and keep dividing reach the next stage referred to as crisis. By this stage, the telomeres have become so short the sheltering complexes collapse, DNA ends get exposed and get fused together aberrantly, and chromosome mayhem ensues basically. Now, there are two outcomes from this. One, the cell will die, or two, the cell can reactivate telomerase and restore telomere lengths, or achieve this by alternative mechanisms, and continue dividing. But now the cell has got mixed up DNA and accumulated different mutations, so when these cells divide, it results in uncontrolled growth, which can result in tumorigenesis. So what's this got to do with aging? Well, the accumulation of senescent cells and the risk of developing cancer increase with age. Moreover, the reduced ability of cells to replicate from telomere shortening can reduce regenerative potential and repair of different tissues. And so this is where we now come to the organismal level and some mouse studies that support the link between telomere shortening and aging. So to study this link, mouse models have been made whereby mice lack telomerase activity, so either the mice lack the gene encoding TERT or TERC, the protein or RNA components of telomerase that I mentioned earlier. And in both cases, loss of telomerase, which causes telomere dysfunction, resulted in a shortened life expectancy, aged appearance, decline in tissue stem cell reserves, and reduced capacity to cope with injury. And to further prove causality between telomere length and aging, the opposite experiments have been done whereby mice lacking telomerase activity have had the activity restored, which then was seen to restore telomere length and reversed tissue degeneration, including the testes, spleen and intestines. And so the way that they do this in these mouse models is they have genetically modified mice that have TERT expression that can be controlled by the presence of a drug. And we also have evidence from human studies as well, in particular from patients who have telomeropathies, whereby they have mutations in the genes encoding TERT and TUC, but also other proteins that are involved in regulating the maintenance of telomeres. And patients with these conditions are shown to have many different ageing phenotypes, such as depletion of hematopoietic stem cells, which can lead to bone marrow failure, immunosenescence of lymphocytes, so white blood cells, and increased incidence of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, liver cirrhosis and kidney diseases. And so that 2011 Nature paper that I recently showed you, whereby they restored telomerase activity in aged mice that had short telomeres, suggests that reactivating telomerase is potentially a promising anti-aging strategy. But would increasing telomere length actually be beneficial? And how would it potentially be achieved? So unsurprisingly, given the link between telomere dysfunction and hallmarks of ageing, there has been much interest in telomerase restoration therapies, as potential anti-aging strategies and for treatment of patients with telomeropathies. The obvious approach is to activate TERT or TERC activity either at the gene expression level or by enhancing the activity of the protein itself. For example, small molecules have been identified to activate TERT including TA65, also known as cyclostragonol, and histone deacetylase inhibitors, However, the mechanism of action of these compounds seems quite unclear at the moment, plus there's quite limited clinical trial data. Moreover, there seems to be interest in hormonal agents such as danazol and 5-alpha-dihydrotestosterone, but again, only very early work has been conducted, and so it all seems quite inconclusive at the moment. Alternative approaches would be to have transient ectopic expression of TERT, either by using viral factors or modified RNA. But one of the issues with these approaches is getting widespread tissue exposure and to get them to target stem cells, which are the regenerative cells of the body. Another approach that I think is quite cool is to stabilise TERC. So remember that this is the RNA component of telomerase. 
And so Turk gets tagged for degradation by protein PAPD5. And a study that came out last year identified a small molecule inhibitor of this protein, which they showed in a study to extend telomeres of cells in culture, as well as showing it to be well tolerated in mice for several months. So what are the potential concerns with these strategies? Well, ultimately, one concern is that it could potentially drive a cell that has entered crisis and allow it to escape by reactivating telomerase activity, and this could therefore increase the cancer risk. And this is supported by the fact that telomerase inhibitors are being investigated as anti-cancer strategies. So what would an optimal strategy be? Well, given the potential hazards of increasing the telomeres of cancerous cells, or cells that are in crisis, or making tumour growth more aggressive, it would seem that a good strategy would have transient telomerase induction, which hopefully would be less likely to fuel cancer growth that could result from having constitutive telomerase expression. But in reality, our understanding of how telomerase activity is controlled and regulated in a cell, and how that balance of over and under activity is controlled, is still incomplete, and many knowledge gaps still remain, For example, further understanding the non-canonical functions of the telomerase complex and the interplay between telomere dysfunction and pathological processes such as inflammation, fibrotic and degenerative diseases is needed. So I think this quote from Elizabeth Blackburn nicely summarises the complexity of the field, that ageing is so many different things and cells being able to self-renew is part of the picture but not all of it. And so there is still ongoing interest in these telomerase reactivation strategies, but it's also evident that much more work is needed to further investigate this and to really evaluate the potential risks. So hopefully this video has given you some insight into how telomeres fit into the ageing process and why understanding their regulation by telomerase may aid potential interventions for ageing. So with that, I'd like to thank the sponsor for this week's video, Longevity Technology. Longevity Technology delivers high-quality daily news and insights on research investments and technologies that extend health span and lifespan. Find the link to their website in the description. So I hope you've learned something in this video. Thank you to my Patreon supporters and thank you for listening.